As the Occupy movement has spread across the globe, the concerns of the 99% have taken center stage. But a focus on the 1%, the corporations and individuals that make up the world's richest and most entitled, is also under the spotlight. Investigative journalist Greg Palace just returned from Bosnia and the Congo, where he was reporting on so-called vulture funds for the BBC, The Guardian, and Democracy Now! Palace, whose new book is called Vulture's Picnic, spoke with WORT's Norm Stockwell. Greg, who are the vultures? They're given that name by their banks proudly. They're the international repo men, billionaires who have made their money by seizing control of the finances of the poorest nations on the planet, often through flim-flam, bribery, you name it. But think of them as repo men. They take old debts, and then they collect getting maybe 10 times, 100 times, 200 times what they put out to get control of these debts. Now, you just returned from a trip to the Congo and Bosnia. What did you find there? When I went to Congo, what I found was cholera. There are 40 million people there without clean drinking water. But it it was about to come to them, according to UNICEF, because $100 million is coming into the Congo from the sale of a bunch of cobalt. It's a very, very wealthy country. There's two wealthy countries called Congo, both suffering from cholera. But a bunch of money was going to come to these nations from the sale of their resources, oil and cobalt. $100 million to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and nearly half a billion dollars to the Republic of Congo. According to UNICEF, this money was going to go directly to clean up their water systems so that about 200,000 kids' lives would be saved. But they're not getting it because the vultures have seized that money. Now, how do the vultures go about seizing money from the Congo? Well, in the case of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, theft, theft of a security. The, The trail required me to then to fly to Sarajevo, Bosnia, where I found out that there was a debt owed by the corrupt old Mobutu regime to Yugoslavia, a nation which doesn't exist anymore. That piece of paper, that like mortgage security, was slipped to an American vulture who goes by the name Goldfinger. Really, his name is Goldfinger, except that he makes the uh, James Bond character look like Santa Claus. Um, Over two million was paid to the ex-prime minister of Bosnia to get this piece of paper. While the Congo, while the two Congos have imploded into civil war with about four to five million people dead, this vulture goes to a U.S. court and gets a judgment to seize the assets of the Congo and gets a $100 million judgment and seizes the, the money from this cobalt shipment that was supposed to go to clean up the water supply. This type of seizure and repossession action is illegal in most of the world. These are outlaws in the rest of the world. This activity is not allowed. But the other thing is the Bosnians weren't so happy. When they uncovered this, they put out an arrest warrant for their former prime minister. They said it's a crime. That's a stolen security. That was never supposed to be charged against the Congo. They had a deal with the Congo that the Congo was going to reopen the factories in Bosnia to make power lines and power towers for the Congo, which is desperate for electricity. So the result of this theft of this security, massive, they closed the factories in Bosnia, destruction in Bosnia, and cholera in the Congo where there's no uh, money or electricity for the water system. This week there was a demonstration in New York, in Brooklyn. There were two effects of our report for Democracy Now! on the BBC. One was that Congolese were just deeply upset. I did a stakeout and jumped the vulture, a guy named Peter Grossman, at his brownstone in Brooklyn to ask him about the stolen security. The result was that the Congolese then went to his, uh, went to this Brooklyn neighborhood and began demonstrating. And, and the demonstrations are going to continue. The second effect was that the number one vulture speculator in America, a guy named Paul Singer, worth $4 billion. He's the number one funder now of the Republican Party from our calculation. He's also Mitt Romney's economic advisor. He had one of his people call BBC to threaten BBC and say that they had a file on me, on Greg Palace. We have a file on Greg Palace. The idea is to smear me and stop me from doing these investigations of Singer and the rest of the vultures. 
And this investigation that I'm doing at both for the BBC and Democracy Now! and in Vulture's Picnic, the book, the idea is to expose the 1% to name them so you find out what they do. Are these guys, as Romney would say, job creators? Or are they guys hoping the economy will die so they can pick at the carcass of the economy? That's the point, is that we're through BBC, Democracy Now!, and The Guardian, this massive international joint investigation, is to expose what the 1% actually does, how they make their money. That's investigative journalist Greg Pallas speaking with WRT's Norm Stockwell. This Sunday, the group Friends of Congo plans to hold a demonstration in Brooklyn at the office of Peter Grossman. They expect to be joined by members of Occupy Wall Street.